Hey, Fred Minnick here with a, another iPhone review. No frills, actually no ascot, and I'm just here uh, churning through all of my uh, backlogged whiskey that I have. I mean, I've got, um, I think my count right now, I'm about 80 deep in terms of needing to catch up. Now, there will be a point where I stop doing the video reviews and just probably sit down and just critique them to find out if there's anything in my whiskey of the year contenders just because I'm so behind and this week uh, we got I think we got 200 about 200 in this week now why so much well because of wine uh, the Today Show appearance which I'm very grateful of <laughs> a lot of people very excited to send me things after that which it's great I'm excited for it I encourage people to send me product. That's the only way I can discover it. Like today, I'm discovering, um, talking about two craft whiskeys uh, right here. One of which I know little to nothing about, uh, and the other one I have a good deal of knowledge and background on. But uh, so today is the day before Veterans Day, so I want to say thank you to all my fellow veterans out there. Now behind me, you will see my uh, combat boots from my rack last pair I wore, or at least the last pair that I could probably still wear that don't have holes in them, and there's still sand in there, I'm pretty sure. But uh, those boots probably are the reason why I have foot problems. So uncomfortable. Uh, but some cool things coming up. I know you want to get to the review, but um, I got Repeal Day Expo coming up. Uh, that's where we have a simulated world. You have your own avatar. You go around in this place called Deggy World, and we just hang out, and we talk, and we sip some whiskey. So if you want to get some goodies from the distillers and some swag, make sure you become a VIP uh, because they get your addresses and they send you stuff. So that's, that's what that's all about. All right, so now I'm going to just jump right in here. Now we can see uh, we got the Beloved Wax, which... I don't know why anybody uses wax. You hear that, Detling? Start using foil. <laughs> so this is uh, uh, Detling. This is a cash drink uh, behemoth here, aged for 72 months. 72 months. And this is uh, distilled, aged, and bottled. And if I can get this fucking thing off. Do I have a knife in here? So, distilled, aged, and bottled in Alabama. Now, they are a really good follow on um, on social media. So, go give them, uh, go give, check them out on Instagram. Occasionally, they'll show the insides of their warehouses. They took a picture once and showed that it was like, I mean, I may, I'm gonna fucking cut my hand on this thing. Jeez. All right, seriously, this wax. So for packaging, they get an absolute zero because this wax is like, I don't even think it's wax. It might be concrete. For God's sake. I mean, I know I'm not like the strongest guy in the world, but I'm not a weakling. Man. I mean, look at that. Look at that thing. I mean, it's like freaking... I don't think that's wax. That's like... That's hard-ass plastic. Speaking of the military, I mean, this would stop some shrapnel. And then they got the synthetic cork. So, I love their plastic dairy deadling. Okay. Here we go. So, Detling's in Alabama. Um, Alabama's a very exciting state for me from a whiskey perspective because their temperature is is, is so unique. A lot of humidity there, uh, and it gets really hot. And you have a you have a lot you have a good base of of corn and 
to be honest with you, there is a lot of good moonshine distillers in Alabama. Alabama is kind of like under the radar and moonshining. Um, having being a bit of a shine drinker myself, I do know that there's some good uh, good shine makers in Alabama, and you know I wouldn't say they're better than North Carolina or Virginia, but you know there's some there's some heavy hitters there. Okay, so. 72 months is a long time for a uh, craft bourbon. And this is coming, clocking in at 110 proof. I, um, I, I very favorably reviewed a, um, I, I reviewed a, uh, a, a Detling in the past. Thought the world of it. Uh, once that review went out, they sold out in a lot of places. And that's one of the things that is exciting for me is when I'm able to introduce people to a brand that they didn't know about. And Detling was, was one of those. This smells like pure butterscotch. Just beautiful, in your nose, butterscotch. God dang, that smells good. Oh, some bitch, that is really, really good. I can still feel it on my palate. Wow. It's still finishing. That is gorgeous. Holy shitballs, that's good. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. Now here's the thing though, it's a single barrel, it's a castring single barrel, um, and single barrels are, you know, they, they are unique. And so this isn't batched and this is, we'll see what bottle number this is. So, uh, I mean, I can't say if you go and buy this bottle, you would get the exact, or you'd go to the store and buy a Detling, you'd get the exact same flavor profile that I just did. But what I can tell you is that what I just tasted, let me taste it one more time. In a word, butterscotch. Just think butterscotch bomb. Just really, really loaded, loaded with butterscotch. I mean, it's complicated and it's butterscotch here, butterscotch there. And then there's like this uh, jalapeno note, um, like a pickled jalapeno in the back of the palate. It's kind of nice, but really exceptional, really exceptional bourbon. I would, uh, I would recommend this all day long. Just be very careful opening this. And Detling, if you are watching this, stop using wax. I this wax is like this is like death wax. This is the this is the kind of wax that you use if you're wanting to shank somebody in prison. I mean, you can cut a jugular with that right there. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna try it, but you can sharpen that up and cut a jugular. Is that what you want, Detling? You want that on your conscience? Hmm? Okay, so. Highly recommended. Uh, I'm actually going to be buying this particular bottle right here um, over probably 90% of, of bottles right now. <laughs> That's how good this is. It's really, really incredible with a big butterscotch, little jalapeno, just all over the palate goodness. So, yes, yummy. Uh, uh, okay, so now we're going to go to the uh, Grand Teton uh, Straight Corn Whiskey. This is um, distilled, aged, and bottled in Idaho. Now, I had uh, spent some time in Idaho uh, when I was covering wine. Spent a lot of time in their wineries there, and I did, I did kind of like go around and check out some of the distillers. They had... As you would imagine, being in Potato State, they had some uh, a lot of vodka, a lot of vodka there. Another uh, another synthetic cork. So there we go. Now, corn whiskey is a category that is now bourbon. So when you put when you drink corn whiskey, when you taste corn whiskey as a professional, 
as we do like at the American Spirits Council of Tasters, you do not want to taste it as if it's bourbon. So corn whiskey is made completely different. Uh, it has to be a minimum of 80% corn and it, had, you know, it can go used barrels uh, versus new barrels. So there's, there's a lot um, that can be done here with corn whiskey. But I've also thought it was an underrated category. I feel like there's a lot of good corn whiskey that's out there. I think Balconis has done some nice jobs of corn whiskey. Again, B. Roland has some good corn whiskey. Uh, but for the most part, it's mellow corn from Heaven Hill, and that's really it. But Jim Beam's had some really old uh, corn whiskey that they blended into, like, Little Book. But for the most part, it's just a category that no one focuses on, no one thinks about it, and it doesn't sound sexy. Even saying corn whiskey, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to a, uh, you know, a backwoods frat party, which, I mean, may, I mean I'm dressed for it. So maybe that's where corn whiskey lives. So here we go. Grand Teton Private Stock Bourbon Cask Matured Limited Release Hunter Proof. Let's see there's an age on here. Barrel number three, bottle 16. I don't see an age, but also I'm just kind of scanning. Okay, so it smells... It smells like a bowl of corn. Like opening up a can of corn and dumping it. Um... I'm not gonna say that's a good smell. I don't really eat a lot of canned corn. I did as a kid. Yeah, it's kind of got it's got a, a bright alcohol nose too. So after that corn, the alcohol is kind of pierces kind of right up underneath the old factory. It goes gets stuck in there. I mean corn whiskey and if you like corn this has a lot of corn flavor in it so again you're not looking you're not looking for you're not looking for this to be like a, a complicated competitor to Elijah Craig barrel proof or anything like that I mean you just you just does it express itself as the category and herein, it does absolutely check that box. Now, after the, where, where corn whiskey can be exceptional is when it starts showing other things than corn. And I would say this is definitely checking that box, like I said, of category. So it is definitely corn whiskey, uh, but there's some like alcoholy notes here that I'm not too fond of. But there's um there's like a um sugar cane note as well. Um there's also some some nice herbs. There's like a touch of like like a like there's a spice, like a I, I wanna say it's like feels like it's a cumin, but for the most part it is corn, I'd say. You know, and it's not to like take away from like what it is, but it's like 80, it's like flavor profile, it's 80% corn. Corn on the cob, canned corn. Uh, I don't think it goes to the degree of cornbread, but it's definitely, you know, probably a couple more years in the barrel, it's probably going to get that cornbread note. So I'd say this is definitely on category, it's on point. Um, and, and if you are someone wanting to support small brands, you're wanting if you're wanting to like make sure that you know talented distillers get rewarded for what they create i would say what you have here is you have someone who identified a, a category that no one's really focusing on uh and they did a pretty good job they did a pretty good job and um, i will tell you that i've tasted a lot a lot of flawed corn whiskey no flaws in this no flaws in this whatsoever just that kind of like there's a little bit of imbalance but that's not a flaw a little bit more time on the barrel that barrel cleans up that imbalance so i think these guys are going in the right direction i'm very excited to see what they're doing um and i applaud them for chasing corn whiskey because ain't nobody focusing on it and if somebody comes out and makes a kick-ass corn whiskey they're gonna own the market 
But that is going to do it for uh, this uh, iPhone tasting and my jean jacket and my jean looking shirt and my white t-shirt underneath. Not that you care how I dress. You just want my reviews. But I appreciate you all tuning in. Again, don't forget to uh, come to Repeal Day Expo. Go to repealdayexpo.com. Uh, for only 25 bucks, you get to hop in Deggy World and run around, drive a boat, do all kinds of cool stuff. But uh, I'm going to keep these iPhone reviews coming because I'm backlogged and this is so much easier for me to do schedule-wise and uh, I don't have to upload it. So, cheers, y'all. Be safe. Remember, Baka sucks. Woo!